Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. The Cid. By Pierre Cornet. Pierre Cornet's Cid, A Tragedy, is his best known piece. It was written in five acts and verse for the first time. The story takes place in 11th century Spain. The drama Cid's childhood by Spanish writer Guillén de Castro is the inspiration for the story's central character, national hero Cid. However, despite the fact that the primary character and narrative were replicated, the progression of the plot was unaffected. The plot and conflict are closely tied to Spanish history, and the fight between the characters serves as a metaphor for that conflict. Diego and Caimena Gormes are the parents of Rodrigo, better known as Cid, and the daughter of Gormes. When it comes to making decisions, they are the ones that have to balance their feelings with their logic. Cid, like many other works of fiction, was based on historical and folkloric materials. Since he was accused of plagiarizing, the author was most likely aware of the legend of Castile's hero. In order to properly understand Cid, it is necessary to grasp the moral quandary at hand. We have two kind of love, one that is based on familial love, and the other that is based on a mutual desire to be in a relationship with another person. Rodrigo and Caimena had to make a choice between their love for one another and their families. Neither a happy nor a sad conclusion is possible due to the numerous conflicts that arise during the story. Despite the absence of a sad death, the central characters never wed in the end. What happens when Rodrigo returns in a year is left up to the imagination of the readers. Act 1. Caimena and Elvira, her teacher, have a chat that sets the stage for the rest of the story. She told Caimena that her father Don Gormes was okay with Elvira marrying Rodrigo, a wealthy nobleman and the son of Don Diego, also known as Cid. Because the gorgeous king's daughter also had feelings for Cid, Caimena was both delighted but also apprehensive. Because of their social strata, the king's daughter was forced to suffer and confess her feelings to her teacher, Leonor. Don Gourmets and Don Diego get into an unexpected fight. The king's decision that Don Diego would be responsible for his son's education, which didn't Gourmets found deeply offensive, was the root of the problem. The king's choice devastated Don Gourmets, a hero and an estimated soldier. Don Gourmets ended up slapping Don Diego after the two got into a fight, with obscenities flying in both directions. Don Diego believed that his honor could only be saved if he fought and killed Don Gourmets. Diego requested his son challenge Don Gourmets and defend the family of Don Diego. Rodrigo was torn between his feelings for Caimena and his duty to uphold the honor of his family. He chose his family over his affections for Caimena in the end. Second Act Don Gourmets runs into a Castilian nobleman named Don Ario right at the start of this act. He had to deliver the king's word to Don Gourmets. Don Gourmets was asked by the monarch to apologize to Don Diego so that the battle may be avoided. In the midst of leaving the palace, Don Gourmets orchestrated the fight with Rodrigo. He didn't even think about apologizing for his actions. When Caimena was distraught, the king's daughter comforted her by claiming that the men would follow her father's orders and abandon the battle. In the wake of this, they learned that Rodrigo and Don Theodore were engaged in an all-out war. The monarch was concerned about the combat but he was also alarmed to hear that the Moors were closing in. After initially planning to punish Don Gourmets, the king decided to abandon his plan since he understood that Gourmets was an excellent soldier who would be crucial in the upcoming conflict. After learning that her father Don Gourmets was murdered by Rodrigo, Caimena travels to the king and urges him to put her father's killer to death. Third Act Elvira, Caimena's teacher, cannot believe that Rodrigo, the killer of Don Gourmets, has the audacity to show up in her house. The only thing that Caimena wants from him is to die, therefore she told him to go however, Rodrigo claims that he wants to be killed by Caimena in the same way. In order for Sancho, a young aristocrat who is in love with Caimena, to leave, Elvia urges him to conceal. Caimena accepted Sancho's sword as an offer of vengeance, and she accepted it. When Sancho walked out the door, Caimena hurried to Elvira, crying, and confessed to her that she was still in love with Rodrigo but that she had no other option. She had no choice but to put an end to his life. Since living without Caimena's love was worse than death for Rodrigo, he chose to hand over his sword to her so she might end his life. Rodrigo departed since Caimena was unable to carry out her retribution plan. Rodrigo encountered his father as he crossed the main square and learned that the Moors were approaching and that a conflict was imminent. Fourth Act The king's daughter begs Caimena not to kill Rodrigo and to protect her honor by not marrying him. Although Rodrigo was aware of the impending conflict, the king's daughter anticipated that he would emerge victorious and be granted royal permission to marry her. 
Kaimina was shocked by the change of events and turned down her offer. The war's end was soon celebrated by all in the palace. Sid, the master, was the name given to Rodrigo because of his heroics in the battle. To show the king how he managed to capture and outwit his adversaries. Kaimina, who had just learned of Rodrigo's death from the king, abruptly ended the festivities. When she woke up, she discovered that the story she had been telling was a falsehood. In order to keep her revenge alive, she determines that Sancho will take care of it. The monarch has organized a duel between Rodrigo and Sancho, and whoever wins will marry Chimena. Fifth Act The end of the play was highlighted by a heartfelt moment. Chimena and Rodrigo bid farewell to each other before the war. The only way she could live without him and next to Sancho is if he won. King's daughter knows it was futile to fight for Rodrigo's affection, yet she nevertheless waited for the struggle to end with eagerness. Sancho returned to Chimena later, and she greeted him with harsh words since she assumed Rodrigo had died. She implored the king to free her from the obligation of marrying Sancho, and then the king revealed the truth to her. Even though Sancho was only there to hand over his sword, Rodrigo was the victor. In spite of her joy at the news that Rodrigo was still alive, her honor forbids her from committing to him. The king had made up his mind. Chimena will be forced to marry Rodrigo after he returns from his year of military service. She must publicly forgive him for everything he has done to her family before they get married. Characters, Sid, Chimena, Don Diego, Don Germain, Elvira, the king and his daughter, Sancho and Lenora, Don Ario, and Don Ario. Sid, as his friends and family called him, was a valiant and honorable soldier. His family's honor was more important to him than his love for Chimena. His existence was pointless without Chimena, therefore he decided to accept his death. A member of the enemy army gave him the moniker Sid since he was considered a superb soldier by the locals. Chimena adored Rodrigo, but she couldn't let his affections infringe on her sense of self-respect. She would never be able to get over the fact that he had murdered her father. As hard as she tried, she couldn't help but fall in love with him. In Rouen, Normandy, Pierre Cornel was born in 1601. He was the seventh child of a modest, near-poverty-stricken family before he became a well-known French playwright. After graduating from Jesuit schools and receiving a legal degree, he never practiced it since he preferred literature to the law. His drama Militi, which he wrote at the age of 23, had its Paris premiere in 1629. After the popularity of the play, he decided to continue writing. Clit André, La Vouve, La Galerie du Palais, and The Palace Royal were among the new comedies he penned between 1630 and 1634. The debut of his tragedy Midé in 1635 was a flop. L'Illusion Comique, The Illusion Comique, was a big hit in 1636 and made him famous. Guillén de Castro's play Sid's Youth, in which Sid is the protagonist, led him to write his own version of the Spanish national epic. Even though his tragedy was well received by the audience, critics panned it because of the play's lack of rules. He briefly strayed from the theater's focus, but he quickly returned. Horace and Polyuked. La Morte de Pompeii, and the Farce Le Montour were all written soon afterward. He stopped composing plays for the stage for a few years after publishing the flop Pertherite in 1652. It was in Italy that he lived the rest of his days, abandoned by everyone and on the point of famine. In 1684, he passed away. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.